So hi guys, this is Miss Izzy at the Harney County Library and I'm coming to you today with our book talk for the month of May. The Darkest Dark by astronaut Chris Hatfield, illustrated by the Fan Brothers. The Darkest Dark. Chris was an astronaut, an important and very busy astronaut. When it was time to take a bath, he told his mother, I'd love to, but I'm saving the planet from aliens. When it was time to get out of the bath and go to bed, he told his father, politely, because astronauts are always polite, sorry, no can do, I'm on my way to Mars. An astronaut's work is never done, so astronauts do not like to sleep. But the parents do. You're a big boy now, said Chris's father. You have to sleep in your own bed. And Chris tried, he really did, but his room was dark, very, very dark. The kind of dark that attracts the worst sort of aliens. But his parents meant it. Chris was going to sleep in his own bed tonight. His mom and dad checked under his bed and in the closet and even in his underwear drawer. They declared the room a hundred percent alien free. They tucked Chris in. They turned on the light, the night light. They even gave him a special bell to ring if he was nervous. Clang, 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 clang. They took away the bell. And then his father said something that worried Chris even more than the dark did. One more peep, young man, and I'm afraid we'll all be too tired to go next door tomorrow. But tomorrow would be a special day, a very special day. Chris had to go next door. His life pretty much depended on it. So Chris stayed in his own bed without a peep. It took a long time to fall asleep, but when he did, he had his favorite dream. He flew his spaceship all the way to the moon. The next day seemed to last forever, but finally, when the moon was shining over the lake, and the summer wind was ruffling the leaves of the trees, Chris ran next door. The house was already full of people, all gathered around the TV, the only TV on the whole island. Chris found a spot where he could see through the crowd. And what he saw was astronauts, real live astronauts on the actual faraway moon. They were wearing puffy white suits and jumping for joy, jumping so high because there was so much less gravity there. The grown-ups huddled around the TV and they were amazed their whole lives long. They'd never expected to see this sight. Even Chris, who had been to the moon just the night before, was amazed. He'd never really noticed how dark it was there. Outer space was the darkest dark ever.
that night, Chris did a little experiment. He turned off all the lights in his room, even the night light. It was still dark, very, very dark. There were still shadows that looked a little, well, alien. Nothing had changed, but Chris had changed. He'd seen that the darkest darkness of the universe was so much bigger and deeper than the darkness in his room. But he was not afraid. He wanted to explore every corner of the night sky. For the first time, Chris could see the power and mystery and velvety black beauty of the dark. And he realized, you're never really alone there. Your dreams are always with you, just waiting. Big dreams about the kind of person you want to be. Wonderful dreams about the life you will live. Dreams that actually can come true. So here's a picture of Chris as a little boy, and that was his dog, Albert. And there's a little bit more about Chris Hatfield. Growing up, Chris Hatfield spent every summer at his family's cottage on Stag Island in southern Ontario. Like just about everyone else on the island, the Hatfields didn't have a television set, so late in the evening of July 20th, 1969, Chris and his family went to the neighbor's cottage to watch the Apollo 11 landing on TV. So if you want to read or someone have read this to you, the whole note, author's note about Chris Hatfield, and then maybe spend more time looking at pictures of Chris Hatfield, a real astronaut, you can come and check out the book at the library. It is a wonderful book great illustrations and real pictures of Chris Hatfield. And today I'm going to talk to you about books that tell stories about real people. And um, those books are known as biographies. And there are many kinds of biographies. And what I want to do today is show you where you can find them at the library. And um, the first kind of um, biographies are found in what we know as the nonfiction section of the library. So those are books that tell real stories. Sometimes they're about people, sometimes they're about events or you know, regions, geography. And um, so in the library, the books that are biographies that tell the stories of people, they have a yellow label, yellow or orange label, and they all have a number 920 or 921 on the spine. And if you come to the library, we can show you where these are. And so if you're looking for a book about someone, that's where you can find it. And within those biographies, there are different kinds. The first kind I'm going to talk to you is known as an autobiography. It's a book that's written by someone about themselves. And those are usually, you know, people who are already famous. And so one example is this book by Trevor Noah. And the title is It's Trevor Noah, Born a Crime. And he was born in South Africa and he now lives in the United States. So he tells the story of growing up in South Africa and then moving to the United States. So that's an autobiography. And then there are books that tell the stories of several famous people, and it's based on a theme. So this one, for example, is titled, titled The Book of Heroes, Great Men and Women in American History. And it was written by George Roche, and it tells you know, the story of several famous um, American men and women uh, throughout history. 
And so each chapter in the book is about one specific um, person that became famous for one reason or another. And so they're all different, some were scientists, some were artists, so different people. And then, just in case you think those books can be boring, I found one that's really funny, and I think it would be an excellent Halloween book. And it's titled, How They Choked, Failures, Flops, and Flaws of the Awfully Famous. And so it's the story of um, how famous people with not just in the United States, throughout the world, died, and some of them died in very strange circumstances. And it talks about Marco Polo, Polo many, many years ago, and then some more recent um, people such as Amelia Earhart, who was a, an American aviator. And this one is a very funny mo uh, book. I would definitely recommend it if you want to uh, read some interesting stories, but with kind of a slightly gruesome Halloween-ish to a twist to it. And then sometimes an author writes a book, which is a biography of famous people, such as this one, and it's titled Isaac Newton, who was a famous uh, scientist. And it's written by Kathleen Krall, and it's illustrated by Boris Kulikov. And um, although it's a biography, and it's in a series called Giants of Science, the way it is written and um, when you read it, it feels nearly like a, um, like a non-fiction piece. It has cool illustrations. And it's very, this one is very, very well written. And so, you know, when you read it, you don't really feel like you're reading um, information about someone famous. You feel like you're reading a really cool story, and it also happens to be someone famous. So these are the, you know, specific um, um, biography, in, books in, this, in the biography section. Then, Another form of uh, stories that tell the stories of famous people is through picture books. And some of them will be in the um, easy section of the library, but they are still very, very interesting. So even if you are an advanced reader, you might find some really interesting books about people in that, in that section. And in others, although they are picture books, are also in the uh, nonfiction um, biography section. So examples are this one. Um, it's Jackson Sundown, Native American Bronco Buster. And it's written by Doris Fisher and illustrated by Sarah Cotton. And I'll just show you one of the really beautiful illustrations in the book. And so in this case, it tells the story of a real um, a person who may not be as famous as some of the scientists or um, people in the first series of books I presented, but still who had a really important um, um, story to tell um, as it relates to American history. This one I thought was fun. It's a kid's book, which is a biography about Beverly Cleary, who is a very famous um, kids book writer and it's written by Vicki Conrad and illustrated by David Hone and the title is Just Like Beverly, a biography of Beverly Cleary and this one also has wonderful illustration talking about uh, Beverly Cleary growing up and maybe how the stories she tells relate to her own childhood. The other books I have here um, this one is titled Duke Ellington, and that's by Andrea Davis Pinky, P Pinkney, and illustrated by Brian Pinkney. Also, beautiful illustrations. And um, so this one is, although it's a picture book, same format as the as two other ones, this one is in the biography section of the library. And this one has a slightly different approach and it's titled Bullseye, a, a biophotography of Annie Oakley. 
and it's written by Sue Macy. And in this case, Sue did a lot of research and um, you know, uncovered many photos of Annie Oakley and then used those photos to write, to illustrate and write the story of his famous um, cowgirl, Annie Oakley. All right, so now there is a third way in which we can learn about people either famous or people who really did um, exist. And it is known as um, historical fiction. And so it's a book that tells a story and within that story, that famous person appears in the story. One example is, you're used to me bringing up the Ranger in Time series. So this one is Ranger in Time, Race to the South Pole, and it's written by Kate Messner and illustrated by Katie McMorris. And in this case, our hero dog ends up going to the South Pole with, uh, and he joins in the expedition of Captain Robert Falcon Scott, also known as Scott of the Antarctic, who was one of the first people to get to the Antarctic. And so in this book, Scott, Captain Scott is not the main character, but he is featured in it. And so that, that would be a historical fiction that tells you, that mentions an important historical um, person. And then another kind of biography that you will find also in the, in the fiction section of the library. So it's a, it's a fictitious story. And this one is titled Our Only May Amelia. And it's written by Jennifer Holm. And in this case, this author wrote a book based on the diaries of one of her um, ancestors, one of her great aunts. And so her great aunt had written many diaries and then the author read, carefully read through the diaries and then did more research and wrote a book which is considered fiction because many of the things in the book, um, you know, she probably came up with, imagined herself. But there are also many aspects of the book that talk about the real life of a real person. So the last um, kind of book that tells um, the story of a real character is in the graphic novel section. And you know, I'm very fond of graphic novels. And so this is Robin, Robin Hood, Outlaw of Sherwood Forest. And I'm sure you've all heard of Robin Hood. And he's maybe a little bit more of a legend than a real character, but the legend is based on a real, or one or more real um, characters in England many, many years ago. And this one is written by Paul D. Story, and the drawings are made by Thomas Yeats. So I'll show you one of the pages. This is not very cool too. Very, very interesting. Um, drawings in this graphic novel. So my purpose today was really to, so that you know that there are many different ways, and many different books, many different ways in which authors write about um, real people. And so sometimes it could be a little bit intimidating you know to read about someone famous and you think it's going to be a little bit dry maybe but in fact authors have many ways of writing either about themselves as in this book by trevor noah or about other famous people or simply about people who they know existed but may not have known in person and I hope you will come to the library and look for books about famous people. And remember that you can always um, ask us when you come in and we will guide you and help you find what you need. And there will be a craft to go along with the books and you will be able to come and pick it up at, um, at the library about the, the, dark, the darkest dark. 
um, the, you can come and pick it up at the library um, any um, time between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then I will bring a craft to get along with the book um, when I come to your school um, in May. So have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope you will come to the library and look for biographies. Bye.